Well, that's right. Yields on the benchmark R186 are sharply weaker at the moment. And that's really as a result of what's happened since last Friday. We have 7.96% uh, for the R186. And of course, that was trading at 7.73% last Friday. Uh, that was just before the unemployment data was released in the United States. Taking us through the action is Vickers Furstenberg. He's portfolio manager and head of interest rate process at Future Growth in Cape Town. Vickers, uh, good evening. Thanks very much for joining us. Good evening, Stephen. Vickers, do you think there's been an overreaction to that non-farm payroll release last Friday? Because we've seen it across all markets, equities, currencies, and also in the bond market as well now. It certainly is my view, Stephen. Um, you know, the, the Federal Reserve has been telegraphing this possible start of the normalization process for a while now. And uh, sure, Friday's data, the uh, employment number in particular was higher than expected, i.e. more people uh, in employment. Um, and of course, the unemployment rate was also down a touch. But to me, you know, I think the market is ignoring a few other things as well. Um, for one, the modest wage gains. I mean, um, I think the Federal Reserve was quite clear um, the last time as well when they said, listen, uh, we need to start normalizing rates um, at some point. But it is important for us to have a good feel for where inflation is heading, uh, in particular the 2% target that we have. Um, and, you know, if you take that back to the labor market, we need to see where it's more wage gains. Now, the market, I think, is at the moment is convinced it's going to come. Um, and you see this sort of rally in the dollar, uh, which obviously will have implications for the U.S. economy at some point in any case. Um, because uh, all the participation rates, I mean, just sticking with that unemployment number, the participation rate hasn't improved by much, so less people looking for jobs. Um, so is there too much focus, as you say, on that single headline number? It's, it's, it's certainly, I, I would agree with you on that. Um, there's, there's a lot of focus on, on the specific numbers. We found this in the past in, in, on many occasions where you know, the market is really sort of focused on one particular number. Um, and then it takes a skew. Maybe just to be fair, obviously if we zoom out, we all know um, on planet Earth at the moment, it's about the issue around subtrend growth. It's about low inflation, in certain instances even fear of negative inflation. Um, and, you know, against that background, the U.S. has been doing fairly okay. But, you know, even that okay is not great. Um, you know, are you really that positive about U.S. growth on a 6-12 month view? Uh, is it going back to trend? Is it going to sub be, be sub-trend? Is the Fed going to be able to, even if they start normalizing rates as the markets are, markets are pricing now, um, going to be able to do um, tighten policy aggressively uh, on a forward-looking basis? I doubt that. Perhaps let's look at the focus in on the reaction that we've seen, particularly from our bond market, because we have the R186, the, the benchmark bond, basis points jumping more than 25, sorry, the yield jumping more than 25 basis points since before mm -hmm. that announcement. I mean, are we looking at money flowing out of South African capital markets? We've certainly seen some foreign selling um, over the last few days. Um, I think that's to be expected uh, because, you know, the view is that there's a strong link between the majority of bond markets, you know, to to that benchmark market, i.e. the U.S. Treasury market. So you see U.S. Treasury rates rising for whatever reason, it tends to be a positive correlation between the two. Yes, we've certainly seen some uh, foreign selling. Um, the yeah, importance of that uh, on a medium term, view, obviously, it's, it's, it's questionable because last year we've seen some selling by foreigners, yet the market did actually very well uh, because of local demand. So, you know, at the end of the day, one's got to be really careful to get carried away by that. So do you think we just have to wait until the dust has settled here, Vikas? Um, most certainly. I think, you know, market sentiment is a strong thing. It's sometimes just very hard to sort of go against that. And you need, you know, the market just to settle, uh, you know, find the new levels. It's, it, and the big thing that's driving markets at the moment really is the dollar. I mean, it's the dollar that's causing all of this. Okay. Maybe just to close off with what sort of demand did we see at the, the weekly bond auction today? Was it reasonable? It was fairly reasonable, I think. Um, uh, it's, it, it, the bid cover ratio was 
slightly lower compared to last week, which is probably a little bit surprising because, you know, yields are higher, i.e. prices lower. So um, I guess it's just, you know, not enough market participants out there who sees value uh, in the market at the moment, at current levels, because they simply do not know what's going to happen to the uh, exchange rate. Because that, that's where we have to leave it. But thank you very much for your insights this evening. You're welcome. Thank you. That's because Fristenberg, he's portfolio manager and head of interest rate process at Future Growth.